Welcome back to Carloop E30 M3 Recreation. In this episode, the E30 is finally off the body jig and mounted to the rotisserie. Spencer plug welds the rear quarters on, and we'll take a look at the E30's carbon fiber C pillar rear window surround. A reminder, please subscribe and like. We are now on episode 14. <laughs> Now over to Spencer from BMP Conversions. So, driver's side rivets are in place. You can see how we have to scuff the arch up. That arch has to be totally scuffed up. That's 80 grit, that is, uh, for the glue to adhere to that. And then you can see the rear quarter panel. Once the plug holes are drilled, same thing. You have to take that down to bare metal to um, get the glue to stick to that also. But the good thing is, once the glue touches it, it's a sealed surface, so no water can penetrate it. Obviously, once that's in and glued on, we're going to spray paint down there anyway. I'll shoot some primer down there, and, uh, and then I'll also put some extra sealant around it as well, so there's no water penetrate that area whatsoever. So, the rear quarter is now glued on, so it's glued all in this, this entire area. All the plug holes are... I've been fully drilled out, so they're ready for me to weld. Um, you can see down the door shut as well, all the plug holes that need welding up. The arch is on and everything lines up perfectly. You can see what I've done is I've applied the undersealer down that joint to make it totally 100% waterproof now. So you can see that undersealer is all down the joint. It's well sealed. You're not going to get any better sealed than that down there. All right, so that actually used three bags of the, the 3M under sealer. That is probably the best stuff we could have put down there, to be quite honest. But that's all the way around. And it's painted as well, just to obviously paint it all black. So the under sealer is grey, and I've just painted it black. That's totally waterproof. The rear quarter, I don't know whether you can see that, but the rear quarter is fully on. All the plug welds are, are done, so now I've got to grind all those plug welds down and prime all the surfaces. I'll just show you in door shut as well. Door shut, all plugged up. Along the bottom of the sill. I used to make the E30 M3 rear window frame in fiberglass. I have made many videos about this item and the reason why I stopped making the item in fiberglass. There's two options which I do. So the first option is resin infusion rear window frame. So the resin infusion rear window frame allows you to have the rear window frame in a sight view carbon effect. So you can see that the, the actual finish of the carbon fiber, this item is made so the, the actual outer skin, this piece here, is actually made in resin infusion which is the cloth is laid into the mold itself that's laid into dry cut to shape built up through the layers they then pull a vacuum on it with the release ply in and the uh, mesh that allows the, the resin to travel they pull a vacuum on it uh, if the vacuum holds they then in, infuse the resin throughout the item pulling the air out and pulling the resin through that allows for a surface finish which is nigh on perfect so this uh, this item like i say is a resin infused item the outer skin is the resin infused part the internal structures which are that part there this part down there all them internal structures are actually still lay laid up by wet lay or made by wet lay and the reason that is is because uh, they are so intricate and so small and delicate and, and awkward that it would be very difficult to make them through resin infusion. This window frame is made with one continuous piece of carbon. So there's no cuts or joins in this piece of carbon fibre. And that basically just gives a perfect surface finish. So if you're going to have a carbon fibre boot lid on there as well, that item will look stunning against a highly lacquered or painted polished boot lid. So option number one is a resin infused window frame with internal structures and the window frame kit comes as this item with the internal structures 
and the internal part inside the boot lid. That comes as a kit for £1,600. The second option is a wet laid, gel coated carbon fibre window frame. So this is still made from full carbon fibre. The only difference is, is that on the very surface, instead of having clear resin, it's got a blue gel coat. Now the blue gel coat, that is in place because these items can be laid up a lot faster. They are not made with one continuous piece of carbon. There is many joins in this item. There's no structural loss, no strength lost. It is just a case of if we were to leave it clear and uh, not put the gel coat on there, the item wouldn't look very nice. The reason I do this option too is because, well, 99% of people want to paint the item. And if they're gonna paint the item, that's pointless having a side view carbon effect when you're gonna put paint on it. So I do the second option and obviously lower the price of the second option. The second option is 1,100 pounds and obviously that's a 500 pound saving between the two items. The main reason is, is because it's more difficult to lay that one up. All right, so they are both equally as strong as each other. They both fit as well as each other, but the blue item is made for a different market for the people who are painting the car. There is a third option to go with this window frame. These two little items here, which is either side. Now, if you look at this item, you can understand what it is. This is basically a mould has been taken from the very top of the rear quarter panel. So the rear quarter panel of the E30 M3 is completely different to the rear quarter panel of the original standard E30. You can see the top of the rear quarter, which is the new gutter. So the difference between the gutters is that this is the M3 gutter, and then this is the standard original gutter. And you can see how far we are away from lining those two up. So the new window frame will drain its water down off the rear screen into the gutter at the back. But then if these rear quarter tops aren't in place, the water will just fall straight into the boot. So this basically gives you the M3 top of the rear quarter panel that you can bond on and then fit the rear window frame and your water won't drain into the boot. So I'm just gonna lay this item onto the car. As you can see, once it's laid onto the car, we'll just step back. All right, so you can see now in depth how the new gutter comes further out, the rear window drains into it. If the gutter isn't in line or you haven't got this part which curves up into there, the water's just gonna drop straight into your boot. You can see where I've got to trim. So you can see the actual angle shape through there on the rear quarter and the angle shape through the top of the window frame. You trim that off through that line, you apply glue on the top there and there and then glue the item straight down. All the spot weld areas that I weld, they're all ground down. You can see it actually takes quite a bit of work to grind them so that they're nice and level uh, nice and thin so you can see the two bits of metal everything's ground down properly so all the new you know that the rubber seals go over there properly seal up nicely um, I've still got to do the actual brazing but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now the car's ready I'm gonna take this car and put it onto the ramp and lift it off the jig and then I'm gonna swap them round and put this car onto the spit The underside uh, removal, you can see that obviously around those areas along the back panel and in those pocket areas, the, the under sealer was removed on the jig whilst we had it on there, just so the, the reason was that the, the main reason the, the grinder wouldn't have got that close to those edges and we didn't want to run the grinder near the new panels. But uh, you can see obviously the uh, wheel well has been removed, the underside of the car is now on its way to being removed. Um, I just want to zoom in on a, a few areas, suspect areas that you wouldn't have normally seen if we hadn't removed this under sealer. So you can see that the rust is actually tracing down on the two joints from the spring hanger. So all this rust area, all under there as well. Um, that, that's actually uh, pushed this, 
the sealant off and rusting under the sealant and you, wouldn't, you, you couldn't actually tell that that's doing that. So in no time at all, um, you could have ended up with a, having to have a, a rear chassis repaired. Um, there's other areas like uh, the main fuel tank mounts. So you can see all the way around there. It isn't actually rotten through as far as I can see, but we won't know that until we blast it. But all them areas uh, were unmissed. You, know, you, we, you physically couldn't see that they were damaged. With the with the under sealer on that's a, a brake pipe hose connection so again rust underneath the under sealer um, all around that area there which is the main seat belt mounting point just surface rust um, obviously we won't know how deep it goes until it's been blasted but this is the main brake pipe mount the, the little thread is snapped off there so I need to get that out but you can see all these areas were actually fully hidden by the undersealer. So the water had penetrated underneath the undersealer and had actually started rusting the car behind the undersealer, which means that no one could see the extent of the damage of what was being caused. You can see uh, that's just a massive sort of scab of rust. Now, fingers crossed, obviously, that still sounds pretty substantial. So um, hopefully it's just surface rust. If it isn't, we can repair it, it's no problem at all. But the main point of this video is to show that you know we're doing everything we can possible to sustain the longevity of this build once it's made. Obviously, I don't want ENDS listers coming back and having an MOT failure you know, in a year's time just because there's a hole appeared somewhere. So this is the reason why I go to the extent of rem removing the undersealer off the whole underside of the body of the car, sandblasting, rust killing, and then repriming, repainting, and then underseal, and then paint again on top of the underseal. And the reason we do that is that if for any reason this underseal moves in the future, cracks, um, get caught by the spring, uh, and then the water penetrates, when the water penetrates, it will just hit a surface of paint. So it will go through the undersealer, hit the surface of paint, and won't rust anymore. Um, you can see that there's still a half a car left to do, so the rear foot wells and the front foot wells and the chassis rail. And then once we're at that point, there's about two days worth of work to get the undersealer all the way off to the front. Once it's at that point, there is the little areas you have to go back over the entire body and you know you have to get these little areas off, which are a nightmare, all in these areas because the previous shell I've sent for sandblasting, they couldn't actually remove the undersealer. The undersealer would just heat up and spread around like a glue again. So they basically said to me that this time round, every drop of undersealer must be off the underside of the car. So they, when they blast it, it they're just blasting bare metal. It's uh, getting very close. She should hopefully next week, the end of next week, be fully ready to leave the workshop, go off to the blasters, and be fully primed underneath. All right, so within two weeks, this shell should actually start to really, really look something. So that's another episode down, and as Spencer just said, the bodywork will soon be completed, and the exciting part of bolting on all the amazing enhancements will start. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe and press the bell. Thanks, guys. Last week, I had an MOT on my BMW M3. Then today, I suddenly noticed the service light indicator was displaying on my iDrive. Well, my car doesn't need a service. This is actually a reminder indicator that the MOT is due. So in this video, I will take you through the steps.